Warning, this video contains clips and excerpts of a humorous nature not normally found in math class. These are intended to fight the adolescent condition known as short attention span, found heavily in the modern teen, especially when in school. The only thing you should attempt at home is the math. The rest, you just laugh at. Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, 5-1, identifying linear functions. Why it'll be more easy than catching this pass. All right, now remember that a function, every x only has one y. Now, what the x and y is, that's okay. As long as each x only has one y, it doesn't matter what it is. One can be two, and two can be a billion. It doesn't matter, as long as each x only has one y. Now, linear function, however, is a function, but also has to be a straight line. So there has to be some sort of formula to go with it. Now, the question is, is this a linear function? Well, the first one you see, it's definitely a straight line. Every x only has one y. So when, you know, when x is negative 4, y is still 5. When x is 0, y is 5. So even though the answer is always going to be 5, every x only has one answer. Same with this one. Each x only has one y. No problems there. So both of these are linear functions. This, however, is a function. But since it's not a straight line, it's not a linear function. So function, yes. Linear, no. This guy's a straight line, but it's not a function because if you notice when x is negative 5, well, it can be almost any y possible. So an x doesn't have to be one single y, so this is not a function. Now let's look at this graph here. Now you notice, in this case, these form a nice straight line, and you can follow along on page 297. So when x is negative 2, y is 7, x is negative 1, y is 4, x is 0, y is 1, there's obviously a pattern to be had. As you can see, it goes straight down. Straight line equals linear function. Time for a break. <laughs> And we're back. Let's look at this nonlinear example. So you see here, each x only has one y, but it's starting to bend. Therefore, it's not linear. Now, if you take a look here at our example, at negative 2, positive 6, negative 3, positive 1, 0, 2, 1, you know, 1, 3, 2, 6. Notice how at first, as we're going up one every time with the x, we're changing from negative 3 to negative 1 to positive 1 to positive 3 for our y outcomes, so it's not a linear function. You try. Graph it. Is it linear? If so, what is the slope? All right, hope you had time to look. This forms a straight line. Yep, therefore it is linear. Because you're going, as the x goes forward 3, you're going down 1. So the linear function is y over x. Now the beautiful thing is if it's a straight line, I can just put y over x. So, or the, excuse me, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, basically the movement value of y, which is negative 1, over the movement value of x, which is 3, negative 1 third. Now you try again. Graph. Is it linear? If so, what's the slope? So we'll go ahead and try to graph it. As you can see, it's close, but not quite a straight line. So in this case, it's not a straight line, so it's not linear. It is a function, because every x only has one y. And by the way, how do you know if every x has one y? You should be able to draw a straight line through and only connect one time. If you can connect more than once here, then it's not a uh, function. Break time. <laughs> and back. Now, to graph a linear equation, there are two ways. Example one, y equals 3x plus 1. The first way is to make a table and pick some x numbers. Well, OK. I could pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, plug them into the 3 and make a table. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 0 times 3 is 1. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. 
and 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So you see they all fit, they all form a straight line. No problem there. The second way is to use the slope intercept form, which is what y equals mx plus b was. You remember from uh, last chapter, y equals mx plus b is very handy. You ought to write it down because you will use it a lot. Remember that it's called slope intercept form because you have a slope which is always the m. Why is m the, m the letter for slope? I don't know. I really don't. But I know whenever you see the m, that's what the slope means. And intercept, which is b, which controls the up and down. So to graph a linear function when you have y equals 3x plus 1, remember you can take go from 0, 0, go up 1, because that's where you start, then up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Remember, we kind of covered this last chapter, so hopefully this is a review for you. Now you try, slope-intercept form. Go ahead and graph 2x plus 2. You can do it either way, but I know what I'm doing. I'm going to start at 0, 0, I'm going to go up 2. And then from there I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, like this. break and back now if you have a negative slope you just go up uh, just go down instead of up excuse me so I'm still gonna go plus four now this is important you're still gonna go plus four because plus four is still there however instead of going up two, you go down two over one down two over one down two over one because it is a negative slope like this. See how it's going down 2 over 1. You still go to the right one every time. Whether you go up or where you go down, you still go to the right. The question is, can you go left? Yeah, but then you'd have to like reverse your up and down for your positive and negative, and you really don't want to do that. It just causes more trouble than it's worth. So go ahead and you try y equals negative 2x minus 1. Go ahead. Let's see what you got. Alright, so we have negative 1. Your dot would be right there down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Notice how I'm able to make these dots off this grid? That is thanks to a extension to this program so kindly purchased by the school. Thank you Mr. Richardson. So now we can use this graph all the time. So that's good. Let's go ahead and write down standard form. This is the second form. We will not use it a lot right now but it will come up. The only difference AX plus BY equals C. Nice thing is if you have this, it fits right in. 4x plus 2y equals 10. 4 would be the a, 2 would be the b, c equals the 10. Now we're going to change this into y equals mx plus b. So all you got to do is find for y. So instead of plus 4x, well, we're going to minus 4x. Minus 4x to one side, you minus it to the other. So now you have 2y equals 4x plus 10. Now instead of times 2, we're going to divide by 2. We've got to divide both by 2. So now you get y equals negative 2x plus 5. You try. ax plus by equals c, make it into y equals mx plus b. So go ahead and try. Well, let's see what you got. Is the answer there? Nope. Let's go ahead and solve it for you. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's go ahead and minus 8x to both sides. Now remember, I cannot combine the 60 and negative 8x. They have to be separate. So 4y equals negative 8x plus 60. Remember, it's hard to write with a mouse. That's why it looks so terrible. So ch chicken scratchy. Divide everything by 4. y equals negative 2x plus 15. I hope you got that. And remember, 10 points if you write out, show it to me, this and that at school. Thank you.